This is Neil Pitori. In this segment, I'm going to apply the union bound to come up with an expression for the probability of symbol error in an arbitrary constellation. And here, I kind of drew a fake constellation so that I could emphasize the points that you need to know for the union bound. First, I want to remind you about how hard it is to get an exact expression at some modulations. So for this modulation, I've got m equals 4. If I have Gaussian additive noise at every point, like I do in the additive Gaussian noise channel, and I send S3, and I want to know what is the probability of error, given that H3 was true, I need to integrate this Gaussian expression centered at S3 over the area in which it is not in the decision region of S3. So this kind of triangular area, everything outside of that, I would need to integrate. So integrate here, here, here. And doing that in two dimensions is not analytically possible. We don't have an expression for what that would be. And we could make one up, but we'd kind of have to make one up for just about every geometry and angle of these lines that we're using to, to make the line. So in a sense, what we're going to have to do in this case is do a numerical integration. We could do that and come up with a number. But we can also come up with the union bound for this expression. It turns out that it will be very close to the actual probability of error. Let's go back and talk about error event E2 given 3. This is the event that I'm going to draw here. Remember the perpendicular bisector between S2 and S3 divides the space into two. Given that S3 is sent, the air event E23 is this event on this side of the half space. The, the error E2 given 3 is the error that S3 is sent, but the received vector x is closer to S2. And we're just going to abbreviate the name of this as deciding S2, given that H3 is sent. In general, I'm going to talk about Ej given i, that we're going to decide Hj, given that Hi is true, or that Sj was sent, given that Si was actually sent. And this error event isn't exactly a great name, because the error event decide H2 given S3 also includes this part of S1, but remember, we're going to be doing overlapping areas and taking the union of those events. Whenever we're dividing the space into two, we can just take it as a single integral of a single Gaussian random variable. That is, we can kind of realign our axis to be this black line between S2 and S3. And along that axis, because I have a Gaussian random variable with uncorrelated components, the distribution along this new axis is also Gaussian, centered here at S3. And we're asking about the probability that this scalar Gaussian random variable is on the wrong side of this blue threshold. And that is something that we've written as a Q function, with the distance between the mean and the threshold on top, and the standard deviation of the Gaussian on the bottom. Well, the standard deviation of the Gaussian is the same because it had independent components. It doesn't matter what angle I take this axis. I'm going to have the same standard deviation of the square root of n0 over 2. And on top, we're talking about the distance between here and here, which is half of the distance between symbol 2 and symbol 3. Here I'm going to denote dij as the Euclidean distance between vector i and vector j. This distance is d23. And so the probability of ej given i is equal to this q function. And as long as I have it written that way, let me put everything inside the square root. So it'll simplify to dij squared. Um, the 4 on bottom, 2 on the top, makes a 2 on the bottom, 2 and not. And so this becomes our primary probability of a single type of error. What we're going to talk about is that the union bound says that the union of all of these error events, e, j given i, for j in some set of neighbors, which I'll talk about in a second, that is going to be less than or equal to the sum over the same indices j of the probability of those j given i error events, which we saw just a second ago is this q function. So 
So this becomes our union bound expression of all of those error events for j. But really what happens is we have to think about the probability of error given that any symbol is sent. The probability of symbol error is an average over all of the symbols from zero to capital M minus one of the probability of symbol error for that particular symbol. So once I have this probability of error of a particular symbol, then I'm going to be able to take its average one over m times the sum from i equals zero to m minus one of each individual probability of symbol error. And so this gives me the overall union bound expression that then tells us how to find the average symbol error probability over all symbols that are possible to be sent in this m -ary modulation. What I haven't explained yet is that this ni is the list of neighbors which impact the decision region for symbol i. Okay, so for example, S2 has two neighbors, S3 and S1. But for S3, it has three neighbors, S2, S1, and S0. S2 and S0 are not neighbors because this line, the perpendicular bisector of S2 and S0, doesn't affect the decision region for S2 or S0. It kind of falls in between these decision regions for S1 and S3, and thus doesn't change the shape of the decision region for either one. Once we have that list of neighbors, then those are the error events that we're going to sum over. Because remember, what we're talking about is this, for example, for S3, we're talking about the union of this event E2 given three, we're talking about the union of that with this area E1 given 3, and the union of that area with S0 given 3. Okay, So these three error events would contribute to the union bound expression for the probability of error given S3. And that is exactly determined by which are the neighboring symbols.